Um, I suffered with real event OCD for many years and it was sort of latched 24 seven what it felt like, chronic guilt waxing and waning in the background, okay? Now, other OCD fears sometimes felt like they gave me a bit of space. They felt that they gave me a bit of room. Uh, but with that one, it certainly didn't. It was a latched on feeling that sort of simmered away in the background, like I was living in somewhat a cortisol soup. Uh, and it was very much like that. And it looked basically, OCD scours the past like a homing missile, looking for things in the past that your conditional self-acceptance, which I had at the time, brings up. So if I did dot, 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 I couldn't accept myself. I'd be a so-called bad person, I believe. Therefore, I deserve to feel guilty. I should endlessly punish myself. And I don't even deserve to be happy for one second. And that sort of constant hammering in the mind, internal torture. We know that feeling if we're suffering from that. <clears throat> now, with that real event OCD, that certainly did not, you couldn't put it off. Like you used to hear things on the internet saying, oh, just put it off for worry time. Well, you couldn't do that. It was like, no, it has to, you have to feel crap now. You can't be led off by leave this to worry time. It didn't work like that. Some of the other fears, uh, other OCD fears, it's felt lighter, like, oh, what if I forgot a document? What if I lost something? What if I lost my passport? That was still causing me interference before going on a flight. What if my holiday's ruined because I forgot something? But nothing compared to when those ones ramped up, the real event harm OCD. Um, and I didn't have any idea that I had OCD at the time. So it was just like, I, I thought that I how I was feeling was a genuine uh, concern, definitely not OCD. Well, I didn't even know what OCD was, but even later when I did, I still thought, no, this one definitely isn't. It feels as real as it can get. I don't even feel anxious, the classic backdoor spike where it's sort of trying to get you with that. Like, oh, if you're not anxious, that means that it must be real because we try and frantically tell ourselves that the uh, that, that this is OCD, just an OCD thought, and it's like sort of saying, sorry, my language, it's sort of saying, fuck you. Uh, there's no chance I'm letting you off the hook with that. Um, you're, you've definitely done, done this. Uh, it's definitely real. And uh, you can't get bypass this by just telling, uh, telling yourself, oh, it's an OCD thought, because what a cop out. Wouldn't everyone sort of uh, like to get off things in the past with that? And it sort of feels like that. It sort of doesn't give you that way out. Uh, and so what we cover in the in the webinars is the journey of unconditional self-life and other acceptance, particularly here, unconditional self-acceptance, where the, we haven't got that. We're saying if we did X, Y, Z in the past, then we were unforgivable. We don't deserve to e even be at peace for one second. And that's where it's sort of trying to sabotage us with saying our whole future is now in jeopardy because we'll never be able to be happy again if that's the case. We'll never be able to be at peace again if that's the case. Uh, because we've done something that's uh, so bad, that's unforgivable, and therefore the only existence for us is just constant chronic anxiety for the rest of our life, which OCD is hunting out those kind of specific things. So it will go, you'll say, oh, well, if I was this age, I could let myself off because I was a kid. Oh, if I was if I was that age, I could let myself off. Um, I couldn't let myself off. So it keeps moving the goalpost and saying, well, you were that age. You definitely were that age. So it keeps doing that. Uh, sorry, the camera was moving around a bit. I hadn't put it on this rest here. Um, so if that's what it's going to do. It's going to it's going to specifically hunt out the things where you say, I definitely cannot accept myself under that condition. And if you were 13, then it's going to say 14, 15, 16, same as if it's reverse. If you're trying to work out something, maybe a, a harm OCD relating to uh, another person, oh, they were this age or whichever way they're trying to get in. If, if it was bad that they were younger or older or whatever, it's going to try and sabotage that from every angle doing that. Um, it, OCD is going to do, do look for that. It's always looking for the chink in the armour. It's always looking for that gap in the past where there's uncertainty, where you can't really work out if it was if it was real or not. And then it's going to morph that. And even if you know it's real, it's going to morph how it was or the act in some way or another. Um, and it does that. And then you'll just be frantically thinking, but why wasn't I ever worried about this before? Why did this never, ever bother me before? Because of that's how it's manipulated the scenario, right? And then, oh, if only I could replay it, if only there was CCTV showing exactly what happened, then I could be at peace, the sort of intolerance to uncertainty as well as the intolerance to the thing. And so that's what we break down by changing our perspectives. We don't need nothing in the past in matters, whether it was real or not. 
Uh, it doesn't matter at all. Um, unconditional self-acceptance gets under it regardless. It's unconditional. It does exactly what it says on the tin. But we're so fixated on needing that relief and then feeling like we're just about to get the key for a lock that's going to unlock us to eternal peace. But just as we reach for that key, we never get it. And we're actually chasing a key for a lock that doesn't even exist.